in order to fully understand mechanical ventilation, you need to understand the equation of motion. The respiratory system has essentially two components. The first is the artificial and conductive airways. And in order to get the air through the airways, you need to overcome the airway resistance. This airway resistance is equivalent to the change of, of pressure divided by the change of flow. The difference between the pressure between the two ends of these airways would be called trans airway pressure. The second component of the respiratory system is the lungs and chest wall. And in order to get the air inside the lungs, you need to overcome the lungs and chest wall elastance. Compliance is the reverse of elastance and it is equivalent to the change of volume divided by the change of pressure. The difference of pressure between the alveoli and the intrathoracic pressure would be called transthoracic pressure. And the difference in pressure between the beginning of the airways and the intrathoracic pressure would be called transrespiratory pressure. You can simulate the uh, airways and uh, lung with chest walls to the tube and spring model. In this model, the tube represents the airways and has resistive forces that need to be overcome in order to get the air through the tube. The spring would be the lung and chest wall that has elastic forces that need to overcome in order to expand the lung and get the volume inside the lungs. Now the resistance is change of pressure divided by change of flow, thus the change of pressure would be resistance multiplied by the flow. The higher the resistance, the higher the flow, the more pressure needed to get the, the air through the airways. At the same time, the static compliance is equivalent to the change of volume divided by change of pressure, thus the change of pressure would be change of volume divided by static compliance. The higher the volume, the lower the compliance, the more pressure needed to be applied into the lungs in order to get the air in. So the equation of motion is actually the pressure would be uh, the sum of the resistive pressures and the elastic pressures. In other words, the pressure that need to be applied on one side of the equation would be equivalent to the resistive forces represented by the resistance and the flow, plus the elastic forces that are represented by the volume and the static compliance. So if you look at this equation of motion, on the left side here, we have the change of pressure. That is the change between the combination of the patient's pressure, which is muscular pressure, plus the vent pressures, minus the positive end expiratory pressure, or the intra alveolar pressure at the end of expiration. So this is the driving pressure on the left side. This pressure is equivalent to the resistance multiplied by the flow, plus the volume divided by the static compliance. So let's uh, look at a patient who is on volume control mode of ventilation. In volume control mode of ventilation, the volume will be fixed. And the machine will use whatever pressure is required to deliver that volume, regardless of the resistance, the flow, and the compliance. So if any increase in the resistance, increase in the flow, or decrease in the compliance, that pressure applied on the ventilator will be higher because the aim of the ventilator would be to deliver fixed volume. So the dependent variable will be the pressure 
any change in the resistance flow and compliance would lead to a change in the pressure applied. On the other hand, in pressure control mode of ventilation, the pressure will be fixed and the dependent variable will be the volume. The volume will be dependent on the resistance and the compliance of the system. The higher the resistance, the lower compliance, the lower volume that will result from the same pressure. At the same time, that pressure is a combination between muscular pressure and ventilator pressure. So in volume control mode of ventilation, if the patient started to breathe on his own and participating in his inspiratory efforts, the ventilator pressure will be lower. On the other hand, in pressure control mode of ventilation, if the patient started to breathe, that pressure will be added to the set vent pressure and will result into higher tidal volume. We can also see these forces on the pressure over time curve. The initial rise in the pressure will be the pressure required to overcome the airway resistance. And then the pressure continues to go up higher to the peak inspector pressure. This is the pressure required to overcome the long and chest wall elastins. If you put an inspector hold, there's no need for the airway pressure anymore because there's no more flow and the air is kept inside the lung in order to keep that, that air inside the lung you need to apply pressure that overcome only the elastic forces of the lung and chest wall this pressure would be called the plateau pressure and the area under the curve between the initial rise and the peak inspector pressure lower to the plateau pressure in green here is the airway resistance pressure and the area under the curve here would be the uh, elastic uh, forces that are required to overcome by this pressure so if you understand the equation of motion this way you would be able to differentiate between any changes on the uh, ventilator in regards of changing resistance or compliance with different mode of ventilation and with different participation of the patient. Thank you.